Hello everyone and welcome back to Programming with Dan. In today's video, I'm going to give you a brief explanation on how a web application works. I will tell you about some of the most trendiest languages, frameworks, and libraries. We haven't officially met yet? I'm Daniel. I'm a full stack software developer with over 8 years of experience and my mission is to help you get started with programming and stay with you along the way. For today's video, I made some slides for you to get the concept easier. With that being said, let's dive into it. This is John. John is gonna buy a camera from Amazon website. When he searched the Amazon for the camera he's looking for, he's actually sending a request from his device browser to the Amazon website to display a list of cameras. Let's dig into it more. When John sends his request to Amazon website, he's actually sending his request to Amazon server. Think of a server as a place on a hard drive on a computer somewhere in the world. The code of the web application, like Amazon, is stored on a server. That means that John's request is actually being sent to the code of the Amazon web application on a server. Let's see how a web application code is break down into different sections. Every web application is consisting of front-end, back-end, and database. Once a request is sending from browser to the web application, the first part of the web application that receives the request is front-end. The front-end gets the request and sends it to the related method on the back-end. Normally, the backend is the main place to process the user request. Things like checking validations, applying conditions, server configuration, and so on. Back to displaying list of cameras example, when the backend code receives John's request, it runs some functionalities like checking inventory of the camera, which of them are similar to the model John is looking for, is it ready to ship, and much more. Once the backend code processes John's request, we'll send it to the database to retrieve list of filtered cameras. The list will be sent back to the front-end section and will be displayed on the screen. To clarify this process, I will explain each section in much more details. Everything users see and interact with on the screen is referred as front-end. The front-end itself is breakdown down into different parts. The first part is UI which stands for user interface, and the first language to build UI is HTML. HTML is performing as overall structure of a web page, as same as a house, which is made of wall, door, roof, and window, a web page is made of HTML tags. The second language to build a web form is CSS. CSS is the code to give your house color and details, it's actually the tool to give your structure a character and look and feel. The next item is user experience or UX. It cannot be considered directly as a front-end developer responsibility, but it's a good to have a skill. UX is actually the process of designing a meaningful, enjoyable, and easy to use user interface for the application. No one likes an application which is terribly difficult to understand and interact with. Things like placement of the button and other items on the page, sequence of pages, or even colors can significantly affect usability of the application. The last item is functions of the page. Believe me, this is the most important and most time-consuming step in developing front-end. To simplify this, let me explain it by multiple examples. On John's example, when he sends his request to the server, to display list of cameras, hold the page, even the parts that will not change will be reloaded. That means huge amount of data must be retrieved from database and sent back to the browser to display, which takes few seconds to be done and that's not good. But what if only the product list get updated and the other parts of the page remain the same? In this way, less amount of data must be returned from database and sent back to the browser. This approach significantly reduces the load time of the page. Another example is consider a same page element like a calendar must be reused in multiple pages. 
The easiest approach is to duplicate the same piece of code in different pages. The first negative outcome of this approach is, when you want to make a slight change on the calendar, you have to modify all the pages which uses this calendar. But by using functions, you can build the calendar once and use it as many times as you need. The most important and famous programming language to implement such functionalities is JavaScript. This is a lightweight multipurpose language that is so trendy these days, and you can almost do everything with JavaScript. But it has one negative aspect, and that sometimes you have to write huge amount of JavaScript code to perform a simple task. And because of that, big technology companies like Facebook and Google decided to create a library on top of JavaScript to improve the merits of this programming language and reduce the demerits. There are two famous versatile libraries based on JavaScript for frontend. The first one is React, and the second one is AngularJS. React is implemented by Facebook and AngularJS is supported by Google. These two libraries more or less perform similar functionalities, which are mainly to create user-friendly interfaces. But one surprising point is that these libraries not only is used for web pages, but also can use them to build native mobile applications. Let's move on to the backend. The backend development is a little more complicated. There are more programming languages and best practices to learn. If you want to get started with backend development, the first thing you need to do is to learn a programming language. Nowadays, there are so many choices like C Sharp, Java, PHP, and Python. Here I just mentioned the most famous ones, but the list goes on. No one can say which programming language outweighs the others. Almost all the programming languages can handle every scenario, such as database operations, user authentication, and application logic. But when you want to choose a programming language to learn, there are a couple of things you need to take into consideration, such as learning curve, popularity of the language in your country or region, prospect of the language in near future, or the type of position you are going to land, because, for example, C Sharp is better choice for web development, and Python is normally used for big data. Also, there are always some exceptions. The next thing you need to learn is a framework. A framework is a bunch of libraries to help you speed up coding in much more efficient way. And by using a framework, you don't need to write code for all your needs. For example, to make the communication between the backend and browser, huge amount of network-related code must be run. When you use a framework, you just need to call a method to perform all those functionalities, and you can stay focused on the logic of the application. In real world, actually, no one writes every piece of code from scratch. Though on open source frameworks, you always have the option to optimize the framework code to make it align with your requirements. Moreover, each framework is based on a language. On the list here, ASP.NET framework is based on C Sharp. Spring is the framework for Java. Laravel is the most famous framework for PHP. And Django is a Python framework. Right now, we have all the needed tools to write a simple application. But to be able to implement more advanced, extendable, and maintainable software, we need the correct architecture. When a software is small, it's easy to manage. But over time, by adding other features, the software gets bigger and messy. And after a short time, we'll end up having a giant application, which is difficult to extend and maintain. By using a software architecture wisely, we can make sure to always have a tidy and clean code. The first and perhaps the most famous one is three tire architecture. On this model, the code is split into three layers, presentation, business, and data access. Presentation layer is equal to front end of the application. Business layer consists all the functionalities and logic of the application. And data access is where all the database queries and database connection related functionalities are placed. 
This architecture is used very frequently and is the best choice for small to medium sized applications. The next one is MVC. MVC stands for Model View Controller. This is the architecture that well-known frameworks like ASP.NET and Laravel are built on. This architecture helps you to have a clean and extendable code and is suitable for almost all kinds of applications. The last one in the list is Domain-Driven Design. This one is only used for enterprise applications. In this architecture, first we need to identify all the independent services that our application needs and then design each service separately. For example, an e-commerce company needs services like accounting, logistic, fulfillment, and so on. Each of these services are actually designed and implemented as separate application. And then we need to implement a communication service to connect all of them together. The next item a backend developer needs to know is design pattern. Design pattern is a general repeatable solution to a commonly occurring problem in software design. Design patterns can speed up the development process by providing tested, proven development solutions. Design patterns are actually kind of guidelines to help us implement right solutions for the common problems in development. Let's move on to database. Almost all kinds of software, regardless of size and functionality, needs a place to store and retrieve required data. There are two types of database. The first one is relational. A relational database uses a structure that allows us to identify and access data in relation to other piece of data. Often data in relational databases is organized into tables. Tables can have hundreds, thousands, sometimes even millions of rows of data. Relational databases are very good at keeping your data transactions secure and making complex queries to get information. Companies that are already structured and are not experiencing massive growth will most likely stick to traditional databases. The most famous relational databases are SQL Server, MySQL, and Oracle. The next type is non-relational databases. A non-relational database is a database that doesn't use the tabular schema of rows and columns found in traditional databases. Instead, non-relational databases use a storage model that is optimized for specific requirements. For example, data may be stored as a simple key value pair, as a JSON document, or as a graph. Non-relational databases is great at storing large amount of data with little structure. Companies growing at a rapid pace, like startups, utilize more non-relational databases for its scalability and flexibility. The most popular non-relational databases are MongoDB, Cassandra, and Redis. Let's put it all together. On this slide, you can see a big picture of web development and how different sections communicate with each other. This part of the process is done by a front-end developer and the backend developer is responsible for the rest. Finally, the term full stack developer is referred to someone who can fundamentally understand and implement both parts. I hope you enjoyed this video and a lot more are coming. If this video was valuable for you, give it a like and don't forget to hit that subscription button down there to get notified of the next videos. We'll see you later.